Chris here from Dot Product demonstrating the recall procedure for an NVIDIA Shield tablet for your DPI-8 kit. In your email from Dot Product, you should have received information on the recall and a link to nvidia.com slash support slash tablet recall. I'm going to go ahead and click that link now and navigate to the NVIDIA instructions for the recall. Here I see the recall program and the step-by-step -step procedure to complete it. The first step we see is to update our tablet to the latest software, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to my tablet now for that update. Okay, now on the tablet, the first thing I'm going to do is check for updates. So if I scroll over to the Settings app, and then scroll down to the bottom and hit About Tablet, and then up top hit System Updates. So it shows that I do need to update my software, so I hit Download and let that process. This may take a minute or two to complete and once it is finished you will be prompted to restart your tablet to complete the update which is what I'm going to do now. Back on my computer I'm going to take a look at the second step here which is to check if my tablet was affected by the recall. So now I'm going to switch back to the tablet and follow these steps. Okay, now that I've restarted my system, I'm going to first double check and make sure my system is now fully up to date. So if I go back to settings and down to about tablet and select system updates, I now see my system is up to date. So if I now go back home, now we're going to check and see if the unit was affected by the recall. So if I go back to settings, again down to about tablet and this time select status. This is where we see the battery is Y01. If that said B01 then we would know it is not affected but because it says Y01 we know it is affected. So I actually want to tap where it says Y01 and this is when we start the recall process. So this instructs us to go to nvidia.com slash support slash tablet recall which I'm going to do simultaneously on my computer. Now back on the computer, I'm going to scroll down to step 3, where I see this window on the right that looks the same as what I'm looking at on the tablet right now, and it says you receive a notification on the tablet that includes the device serial number, and I need to enter that serial number below, along with my name and shipping address. So this is the information that you need to enter uh, for delivery of your new unit. So go ahead and put that serial number in and then fill in all of your contact information and the address of which you want the device to be shipped. It'll arrive within two to four weeks. It is important to note at the bottom here, it says, I understand when I turn on my replacement tablet, my original tablet will be deactivated remotely and rendered unusable. This is why it's very important to back up your 530 application, license file, calibration file, and any point clouds on the tablet before powering on your new device, which is a procedure that we're going to go through next. You of course will not see this black box, I'm just protecting my personal information on this public video. So next we're going to select yes and hit submit. Next I'm instructed to go back to the tablet screen and enter the claim number you see here. So back on the tablet I'm going to enter the claim number from my computer. and hit next and now I see an RMA confirmation number which I need to enter back into that same screen on my computer. So here's the last step for me to enter that confirmation number on the NVIDIA Shield recall page and then select complete registration. Here you will see another reminder to back up all of the data on your tablet. Feel free to follow these steps to back up your device but most importantly, we're going to make sure we pull off the Phi 3D file, license file, and calibration file along with your point cloud data and store those safely on another machine until your new device arrives. So next I'm going to plug my tablet into my computer and switch back to my desktop to navigate through those files. Okay, so here I see my internal storage on this Shield tablet showing up in my file browser, so I'm going to click on that and I'll see all of my folders from the tablet. If you don't see all of these folders, it's important to make sure your device is connected as a media device and not as a camera. You can change that by swiping down from the top on the tablet. 
So the first place I need to check is the bottom of the root directory here uh, called internal storage on your computer, referred to as SD card on the tablet. If I scroll down to the bottom of internal storage, I will see a .txt file, which is my license file. I'm going to drag that over to my desktop. And next, I should also see a .cal file, which is my calibration file. If you look at the number here, you'll see a number within that actually matches the sticker on the bottom of your sensor, which is your calibration serial number. I'm going to drag that over. And there's one more file in here that I want to make sure I grab, which is the phi 3 d application file itself. So you should see a .apk file called phi 3 d version 2.0.3. So now that I've copied those three important files over, there are also two folders that I want to copy over to make sure I have all my point cloud files saved. The default storage for your point clouds that you save is the point clouds folder. So I'm going to copy that over now. If you have any point clouds stored in other places uh, or other folders on the tablet, make sure you copy those over as well. The other default folder that you should back up is your DP autosave folder. So I'm going to scroll up to that and copy it over as well. This is where every single file that you capture is automatically saved in its unoptimized DP format. So if you ever have any files you need to go back to, you can find them here, load them back onto the tablet, and optimize them. So now that we've saved all these files, it is suggested that you store them in a single safe folder on your computer or on a hard drive somewhere and wait for your new tablet to arrive. Next, I will show the procedure to load these files back onto your new tablet. Okay, now that I've received my new NVIDIA Shield tablet, I'm going to connect it to my computer and scroll down. There I see Shield tablet again and internal storage, just like before. You'll notice that I don't have the point cloud folder or the DP audio autosave or DP internal folders anymore, of course, because Phi 3D has not yet been installed. So I'm actually going to click above and just drag directly into internal storage my license file, my calibration file, and my application file. The point clouds that I saved here and the autosave files that I saved here, I can go ahead and leave those on my computer if I need to use them for post-processing. The only reason I would need to bring them back onto the new tablet is if there's a file that I need to optimize or set the coordinates or do anything else with within Phi 3 d Otherwise, I can leave those here. So now I'm going to switch over to the tablet screen and we will see how to install Phi 3 d and update your license and calibration files. Okay, now on my new tablet, I've got a few more steps to complete to get Phi 3 d up and running. First, you'll automatically be prompted to log into a Wi-Fi network, add your Google account, and restore your system from a backup, if you had backed it up. Next, there's going to be a few steps specifically for Phi 3 d that you need to complete in order to get it up and running. So first, I'm going to navigate to the Google Play Store. And I'm going to search for a program called ES File Explorer. There it is. And I'm going to hit install and accept. Note that if you did restore your system from a backup, it may automatically install this program back onto your device for you. And you may actually have to wait until all your applications have reinstalled before you can access ES File Explorer. And now I hit open. And here I see all my folders on the tablet and these three files that I dragged over from my computer. First thing I do is tap Phi 3D and hit install. It's blocked the installation, so I hit settings and scroll down until I see unknown sources. Allow installation of apps from unknown sources. I want to turn that on and hit OK. Now I can go back to ES File Explorer and try that again. Install. Next. Install. Accept. Open. I have understood and agreed to the end user license agreement.
Now we have Phi 3D running on the tablet again. And I go to the Settings tab up top. Here I see a default calibration is loaded. We want to make sure the accurate calibration for our sensor is loaded, so I tap the pencil next to Calibration and scroll down to the bottom where I see that calibration file that we dragged over. I'll tap that, hit OK to restart. Now I need to navigate back to Phi 3D. Again, I have to agree to the terms and conditions. I can tap Do Not Show Me Again and Agree. Now I need to go back to the Settings tab and just check that the license file was properly loaded automatically. So here I see the same license file that I dragged over from my machine automatically loaded in, and I can confirm that by looking and seeing that the starting number on my calibration file matches with the license number in the license file. If that was not there, I would just follow the same procedure I did for the calibration file by tapping the pencil icon and selecting it manually. And now we're all set to start scanning. You can go ahead and mount your new tablet into your DPI-8 unit using the spring-loaded brackets and plug it into the sensor to start scanning.